So Melee has sent me their new Cyber X1 mini PC for me to review. So it's the next step up in their line of mini PCs and I wanna take a closer look at it, do some benchmark testing on it. And ultimately this will end up in my observatory as an upgrade to the Quieter 3C that's currently installed. So let's take a look at it. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Inside the box of the Cyber X1, we'll just pop it open. And as usual, we have our mini PC guide, the mini PC itself. So the main physical difference with the Cyber 1 compared to the previous models that Melee has put out is the thickness. They have a new type of heat sink, these little spikes, and you can see a little bit of a design in there. It actually looks kind of cool to help dissipate the heat while the unit is running. But as far as length and width, it's the same size. Again, it's just the thickness because of the heat sink on the top. Power button right there on the front. We have two USB 3 ports as well as a USB 2 port. This is your Kensington lock. If you're using this in a, in a public place or a workplace environment, you need it to lock it down so nobody walks off with it. We have a gigabit ethernet port or 12 volt port for power, two HDMI ports, our audio out port. And right above that, you can see there's a micro SD slot as well as a USB-C port. Also new are they have some rubber feet on the bottom here. So that's nice if you are just sitting on the desk, it helps to keep it from sliding around a little bit more. So let's talk a little bit about the specs on this. The CPU is the 12th gen Alder Lake N150, which is a quad core that runs at a maximum of 3.6 gigahertz with a six megabyte cache the ram in this unit that they sent me i have 32 gigabit of ram which honestly for my purposes running nina and stellarium for everything that's going to be controlling my rig out in the observatory 32 gig is way more than i probably need the melee quieter 3c that i have out there now is running with 8 gig but i will say that they're with the latest version of nina and maybe it's just me, but I feel like Nina's running a little bit slower now. It still runs and I don't have any issues with running it on the Quieter 3C, but uh, with the, what I think Nina's at 3.2 at time of recording now, and they've got live stacking, a bunch of other new features and such. I feel like it's taking a little bit longer to load up now. So 32 gig will do me very well to help with that. Uh, storage on this one is 512 gigabyte. It's just like the previous ones. It's an M2 SSD card. The micro SD slot that I pointed out right here above our audio out can be used to expand your storage and this the micro sd slot will take up to a two terabyte card and then there's also another m2 uh, 2280 ssd slot inside the unit that you would access just by popping off these four screws here and you can expand that up to four terabyte and it supports either an nvme stick or an m2 ssd as well so it's got wi-fi version 5 bluetooth version 5.1 and as always it comes preloaded with windows 11 pro so other things in the box underneath where the computer was actually at as always you have your vesa mount if you wanted to use this to mount on the back of your television set this goes on the back of the mini pc as such and then you can hang the whole unit on the back they give you the screws that you need to accomplish that with as well as a power supply for the mini pc as well to plug into that USB-C type port. So I don't use the power adapter because I have a power distribution block on all my rigs actually that use the mini PC. So I use a 12 volt to a USB-C type cable to power the mini PC right out of my, um, either my Pegasus power box. Lately I've been running the SV Boney power box. So regardless, I don't need the provided power supply, but it's nice that they do provide this for you. So, you know, if you're not using it for astrophotography, if you're gonna use it for a media PC or any other application, this is your power. And I'll leave a link in the description to that power cord that I use, the, the barrel connector to a USB connector to power the PC, in case you guys are looking for one of those to use as well. So if you don't already know, I am a big Melee fan. Uh, it's what I started with when I first needed a mini PC back in the day, and I've had no reason to look anywhere else. They've always worked out of the box as expected. I had no issues with them at all, so why even look at anything else right so i currently have three melee mini pcs i have two quieter three c's and a quieter four c so those three mini pcs currently control the three rigs that i have one of which is my red cat setup the second one is my solar setup that i put the quieter four c on this past summer and then the third one also a quieter three c is the one that's in the observatory and that runs 
everything on my rig, including the software for the observatory. And that's where I'm gonna put the new Cyber X1 at. It just makes sense to give the observatory the upgrade versus my other two rigs. So I will be working on that over the coming weeks while I'm dealing with clouds and snow and everything else. The lack of clear skies have been painful recently. One thing to mention is obviously because of the heat sink, this is going to be heavier. The quieter 4C came in at about 203 grams, where the Cyber X1, again, with the heat sink, comes in at about 307 grams. So it is heavier than the previous versions, but we expected that because of the heat sink. Just like the other models, there is an auto power on feature within the BIOS. So with that enabled, what that means is when you apply power to the computer, it'll automatically turn itself on. If you don't enable that, then when you apply power to the computer, it's just gonna sit there. You have to go out and push the power button to get the PC to power on. Not a big deal if you're always setting up in the yard, you're gonna be out there anyways, but for me, it's a really nice feature because again, when it's in the observatory, I, have, I can turn my power on and off remotely from my office. So doing so allows the computer to boot up automatically for me and I don't have to run out there. As I mentioned previously, Windows 11 Pro and the Pro is important because I like to use RDP, remote desktop, the built-in remote desktop software from Microsoft. And if you don't have Pro, you can't use the client to connect into it. You'd have to use or some other software to get remote access. I just like using RDP, it's always worked well for me, so the Pro version allows you to do that with Windows. As I mentioned in my Quieter 3C video, any stickers that are on top, I always take them off before use because I feel they trap a little bit of heat. It's probably not that much, not that big of a deal, but I don't like stickers anyways. So last thing I wanna do before we wrap the video up is run some benchmark tests against this and we'll uh, pull up the old benchmark test on the Quieter 3C that I reviewed a few months back just to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Quieter 4C compared to the Cyber X1. So on the left-hand side, this is the Quieter 4C that I reviewed back in October and right-hand side is the Cyber X1. So overall scores, as expected, the Cyber X1 is higher at 876 versus the 805 from the Quieter 4. Individual scores, CPU 291 versus 319 with the Cyber X1. GPU scores, 13 and 17. Memory scores, 228 versus 268. And the storage score came in at 273 and 272. Basically the same, which is expected. It's the same 512 gigabyte SSD in both machines. So wasn't expecting any better or worse results between the two. So overall, the X1 does perform better than the previous Quieter 4C. Is it that much better? Does it justify an upgrade? Again, for our hobby, for astrophotography, if you're running the Quieter 4C with Nina and PhD and Stellarium and it's working for you, there's no need to upgrade. If you're looking to upgrade from one of the older Melee boxes like the 2 or 3C, then yeah, I would consider looking at the Cyber X1 as one of your possible options. But again, the 4C is a very capable mini PC as well. The big benefit between the two, you get the faster processor, and with the unit they sent me, I've got twice the amount of memory. Is 32 gig needed for astrophotography? Maybe. It just depends on your needs. I would be fine with the 16 gig. You can purchase the Cyber X1 in a few different configurations, so you can get 32 gig, 16 gig, and I believe eight gig as well. And if 512 gigabyte, if you didn't need that much, you can also get a 256 gig version of it as well. So you can save a little bit of money if you really wanna go after that new N150 CPU. So as I mentioned before, I'm gonna use the Cyber X1 to upgrade the existing Quieter 3C that I have in my observatory. Again, I'm a big fan of the company. I've had no problems with all their PCs. This will be my fourth one, and the previous three that I have have been running absolutely fine, zero issues at all. So it's one of the products that I feel comfortable recommending if you're in the market for a mini PC, because I know there are other options out there for everybody. Before we wrap up, I want to say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and on Buy Me a Coffee. I appreciate everybody's donations and memberships. If you want to help support the channel, becoming a member is a great way of doing that and you also get access to my beginner's guide for serial 1.4 thanks everybody who has made donations that have shared the videos recommended my channel i appreciate it i see you guys out there talking and it's just it's amazing to me that that this is happening so thanks to each and every one of you this channel wouldn't be possible without you so that's it for this video we'll see you on the next one and clear skies